Hi guys, Ryan Lutz here. Today I want to demonstrate how to shim your differential. The first thing I want to show is how I uh, install my pinion gear and then the coupler on the end. Now some people will have maybe a universal that attaches here or a CVD or CVA or like ours has this coupler here at the end because then we use dog bones. So the thing to do that's important is you want to look here and you see that there's a flat spot on this diff for this to ride onto. So what I like to do is I'll take a Dremel and actually flat spot the top of the set screw. Make sure the set screw is very clean. You can use like a rubbing alcohol, you can use motor spray, fuel, something like that. Make sure it's dried off really well. And also do that with the threads inside of your coupler or whatever you're mounting to it. Next, some good Loctite. Uh, you can use red here. I, I use a, a just a good blue, seems to work well for me. And then I thread that in and I kind of go in and back out just to make sure all the threads are covered pretty well. You could also dab the Loctite into the threads directly. Now here's something that I see some people do wrong and this, if you do this wrong, you can prematurely blow your bearings here. So you want to have it set up against the pinion or the, yeah, against the bearings here, but you don't want to hold this tight. So see, I'm pushing on the pinion. I don't want to also push on this coupler as tight as I can and tighten this. See, if I do that, this does, doesn't spin. And this will create ex excess heat because when you're running, this does develop heat and heat makes things expand. And that's just going to get tighter and you're going to blow out your bearings. So how I do this is I still, I press on the bearing to make sure I'm pressing it away. And then I set this up against it gently. And then I just hold it in place. And then start to tighten it. And then I lightly tighten it. You can see it spins much freer than what it was before when I was pushing it all tight. So then once I have that position set, I crank down on it. And this is a, I call this a 10 second hold. So I crank and go one count, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then release. Hurts my hands, but have had really good luck with that. Make sure that this is seated really tight up against it. So that's the important part of your pinion. Now to shim your actual diff. So our Agama diffs, they have double bearings and we have bearing holders that go on it. Now you can either have plastic ones which come in the kit or these optional aluminum ones. Really there's no difference. I often run the plastic ones as well. I just, the aluminum looks cool, that's what I'm running. So first thing I'll do though, is this outside part is where the outside bearing rides in. I want this to be free and a lot of times this can be tight when it goes over. So what I'll do is I'll take a Dremel with some kind of a bit at the end and scuff this up on the inside and open it up. That way it slides over this outer bearing easy. So I don't really want too much tension on this outer bearing. It can create a bind point and I just don't feel like it's necessary. So I just want it to be to where this slides right over that outer bearing nice and easy. I feel that works really well. Now for the shimming of the diff. So I place both of the couplers on there. I can drop the diff in and immediately see if I need shims or not. So as the diff's in here, you can see I have a lot of play back and forth. So I'm going to add some shims. Now all the cars that I know of for 8 scale generally use the same shims. These are 14 by 16 shims. And they come generally in 2 tenths of a mil or 1 tenth of a millimeter. So it's good to have a variety of those. So you can see this one is a 2 tenth shim. And then I have some 1 tenth shims. Uh, I've already had this diff shimmed up. I know what it's going to want, but right away, I'm just going to say I want to start with a couple two tenth shims. Now, for most cars, you're going to just put the shims over here and then try to slide it in the bulkhead and line it all up. The gamma's really nice in this respect. You can drop them right into this coupler, this bearing holder, and slide it on. And you don't even have to worry about trying to make it fit in right. So this time, I put both shims. I have four tenths worth on just the ring gear side. And I can spin it. I can kind of feel the I can feel the teeth in a way. And then I also want to feel the back and forth. I still have a tiny bit of side to side play. So I, I know I can still add another shim. And because I can already feel the teeth a little bit, I would generally add it over on the opposite side, the diff cup side. But for demonstration purposes right now, I want to show you on the ring gear side. So I'm going to add another two tenths. So now I have six tenths of shims on the ring gear side only. Now you can hear that. You can really hear the teeth. That is generally going to be too tight. But the fact that the diff slid in 
means I can still use that many shims. So then it's a matter of playing with the shims left to right and which side that I want them on. So what I'm going to do first though is i feeling that, who knows, maybe I can add more shims. You kind of want to make the diff as, as tight as possible left to right. So I'm going to add these other two one-tenth shims on this side. So now I have six-tenths on the gear side, two-tenths on the other side. And I'm going to spin it. So you see it's still seated in properly, so that that amount of shims wasn't too many. But I have zero side-to-side -side play. That's good as well. So now I'm, I'm going for the gear mesh. I can still feel it pretty tight feeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two-tenth from the ring gear side. So now I'm left with four tenths over here and I'm going to apply it to the other side. So now I have four tenths on both sides. And then we're going to listen. Okay, it spins freer. I can feel a little bit of the gears, but it's not too bad. And you, you want the mesh to be as tight as possible without it being we really feel the gears and it's too tight because they do break in a little bit, they seat in together. So then I also want to add some grease and I use the Protec Premier White gear grease and I just use a little bit. I use just enough to have the gears lightly coated. So you can see there how much I use and as I spin that around, you know, it provides a nice coating all the way around. I feel that that's enough. Because I do service my diffs regularly, you know, every one, two, three hours. So then I'll put the case on, and you can do a quick cursory te test. Press on it, do a spin. And I can feel the teeth a little bit, but it's not too bad. So then you would tighten up some of your screws, whatever screws are necessary, to tighten up the bulkhead, how it would be in the car. Because that's going to what's going to be what tells you if it's really tight or not. Okay, so my four screws are tight. All right, so see, I can really feel it now. I can feel the teeth. It doesn't spin really freely. So I think I have too many shims on my gear side pushing it into the pinion. So at that point, we take it apart. And we're going to do a swap. We're going to take another one of these shims from this side. And place it on the other side. Drop it in, and here I don't feel the teeth at all, but let's see when I tighten it up. Okay, now we're all tight. Ah, uh, very smooth. I don't feel the teeth really at all. I have it side to side. I can feel the smallest tick ever, but it's not bad at all. And what else I can do is I can hold the diff in place and kind of rock the pinion to feel if you have play there. Now here, you can actually see if I can show you this in the picture. There you go. I have a little bit of play. So I know I just moved a two-tenth from this side to this side. I probably could have got away with just a one-tenth. So if you really want to be picky about it and make sure it's right, go back and do it again. So what I'm wanting to do now is I'm wanting to move a one-tenth from the cup side to the gear side. So seeing as though I want to find a one tenth out of this and not mess this up. Make sure I find the correct one tenth shim. That's a two. Here's a one. So I'm going to put the one over there. So let's put these all back on the diff cup side. And we're going to add a one tenth to the gear side. And this should be the final step. This should be just right. So some cars are more critical. Some cars, if the, say, cases, the material, the plastic isn't hard enough, they create more flex. And you need to be even more critical and maybe start with a slightly tighter diff as it breaks in. But here, still super smooth. I have the smallest tick of side to side, so maybe I could add another tenth if I wanted. And then just checking the pinion, it's hardly noticeable any kind of knock, super smooth. I would go with this. This will be really good. And hopefully that helps you guys in learning how to shim your differentials. 
obviously the Agama A319 makes it a lot easier than other cars. You're not trying to get those shims and keep them from falling out as you push the cases together. The stiff holder is really nice. The double bearings makes it super durable because there's less flex like this in this assembly. So really something to look forward to guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Come back for more videos. Bye-bye.